So I'm here to talk about how to have fantastic sessions and a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a mobile developer at Transit, so if you don't know the app, please go check out. And I'm also a GDG Montreal Android, and we're getting rid of the Android part, uh, lead of, since like four years. I'm also a woman tech picker ambassador, I forget. We changed lead from ambassador, if you don't know. And I'm also Canadian regional mentors. So yeah, and I'm being in the community since five years and more. So I know a little bit and I did a lot of mistakes. So you can talk and ask questions about all of those. So uh, here is me younger trying to find <laughs> how to uh, do great sessions. And I don't know how. So we will uh, check out, uh, try to bring you one a little bit of tips and everything. So uh, the first part is that you need to choose the content and have great speakers and mixing them together to create your great session. So what about the content? Uh, if you don't know your audience, like it's really important to know that uh, what they are thinking about to do a great event so they will learn and feel welcome and feel engaged to your event. Uh, how to know your attendees? Uh, you can ask specific questions on Meetup if you don't know. So when people join, you can ask some questions. What is the topic? You'll, why you're coming to this group? What is your interest, your background, and things like that? So you can learn more. You can do the same by just a simple Google form and send a survey after if each event and try to, like, we're repeating ourselves as mentor, but try to know what they want to learn and what, what topic interests them and if they want to talk, because you're always looking for speakers. Also, Eventbrite, if you use that, you can ask multiple questions. So this is all great place to try to learn your attendees. And also you can become friends and like me, take a coffee and take beers and things like that. So it's great. Uh, an important point is to know uh, what are the trends in your city what is the technology that people love and things like that, so you can provide content that match those technology. Um, this is some idea of great content. So the popular content, you can add AI everywhere. Uh, people, <laughs> like, there is AI, this is a popular technology, people are being crazy about that, so this is one. Uh, you can also talk about anything that is new because uh, we have our busy life and we don't have time to learn anything. So if you're talking about new technology, people are super excited and they're like, oh, I don't need to read all those documentation. They already did for me. So, and they will share. So new topic, there is framework, ID, name it, new languages, etc. Uh, you can also have, uh, talk about all the problems we have, or like architecture, testing, name it, and other things, code labs, learning new stuff, it's always popular. Uh, when you choose content for a big event, you try to have at least a third of super great content that will interest the majority of people, a third of great content, and you keep some content that is not really for everybody, that is super specific, or you want to try a new content, is the place to. Like, if you put just an enough amount of other uh, content or subject and you want to test it to an event, don't put it all the event, just a small part, and this will be great. Um, when you're thinking about creating your event, just have an idea of which agenda you want to have for your event. And it's super important to make a super <laughs> great speaker and content at the beginning of your event so people will wake up because we are all lazy and we don't want to wake up. And after that, you can put a new experimenting speaker in the middle, but uh, in between the middle. And at the middle, you want a great speaker so they will still be awake and they will still stay to your event and not go in another place. And at the end of the event, it's always great to for analyze something with a big shot and like something that will be, people will remember and say, oh my God, that was so, it, this story changed my life or <laughs> <laughs> this was so a great meetup or event because of 
they remember just the last speakers. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can decide to do an agenda with multiple track. Uh, Sometimes it's more easy to have track by technology. And don't forget if you want to do code labs and other stuff, it takes more than one hour to do a code lab because all the technical issues, people don't bring laptops, they don't have internet, like things like that. So put more time for this track and everything. Finding speakers, ha ha ha. Who likes speak here? Uh, there is some people. Usually, me, I hate speaking in public. I'm speaking right now. <laughs> and I'm always stressful. I'm like, oh, I will forget every word that I say because I'm a French speaker and people notice and everything. But yeah, it's hard. Uh, for, <laughs> for the first part, you need to create a call for papers uh, to say, hey, we're looking for uh, speakers. And this is the topic we want to talk about in our event. So you specify the topic earlier that you find with your attendees and everything. And you specify the level of complexity. Is it for beginner? Is it for expert only? And you can have a big of, mo of both and just have session that is more beginner or more advanced and things like that. And don't forget about deadline because people doesn't follow deadlines and you need to remember them. So uh, there is a lot of, of tool that helps you create a call for paper. The simplest way is to do a Google form if it's a small event and it's your first one. Don't go to all the complex and other tools. You don't need to pay to do like your first event and things like that. Uh, but if you have a bigger event, there is a papercall.io that exists and is free uh, until a number of submissions. And there is also Sessionize that have free part if your event doesn't charge. If it, you charge, they have half price, but it's a good tool to follow speakers. And what is fun with those tools is there are already a bank of speakers that are in the platform. So when you send your call of paper, it's sent to everybody and they can just apply. But you can also uh, send uh, the call for paper everywhere. Uh, it's important to specify in a call for paper, you want to know more about the speakers to be able to evaluate them after that and choose which one you will want to take. So ask for a video, ask for background, ask for uh, did they write a blog and think about technology. It will help you a lot to uh, choose your speakers. Um, you need to attract speakers because we don't, I don't know if anybody pays speakers to go to your events, but usually we don't and we are all volunteers. So we need to find a way to bring them to our event and say, oh, here is the good thing uh, you will have uh, in our event. First of all, uh, you need to have your website already done for your events or something that, say, that will explain what your event will be about and why it's interesting. After that, and I, yeah, I put some link uh, of already a website that you can reuse and there is many more and we can share it all together to create your events. To attract speakers, uh, please tell them what they will have as a gift. Uh, Sometimes you just say you can come with another person and assist to all the events. It's something, it's a benefit. They also, uh, the transportation can be refound. It's great because, yeah, you don't want to spend all of your money to go travel and go speaking. Specify if you pay the hotel, if you have childcare that is available. All those things can bring a speaker to your event and make it more attractive. Also, uh, please record talks. It's a good way for them after that to show and to share the information to everyone. And yeah, you can sell your city and say it's super beautiful, you should visit, blah, blah, blah. It's a good way. <laughs> so speaker <laughs> will be like, oh my God. You need to spread your call for paper. So there is some uh, Twitter channels uh, that talk that have a list of followers of speakers and there is other place you can share it. So social media, uh, other meetups. So it's important to share the event most all the place. A nice part is uh, to don't forget about diversity. <laughs> it's important to share your uh, call for paper in some group that you will not reach out usually. So bringing diversity is bringing people that is not like you. So you need to try to find those places and try to reach those speakers 
that is not usually applying to your event to come to your event. So, yeah. Uh, a good way of finding speakers is like to talk, to find every speaker in conference and go find them and talk about, share information, uh, sell your event, say that you're an amazing organizer and you want them to go to your event. And yeah, business card is always useful for that, but we have technology also, so we can share link, email, whatever. Uh, encourage uh, per your personal, uh, encourage everyone to talk. Like, a lot of people are ashamed of talking, public speaking, but they are super good experts. And if you encourage a little bit to try in a meetup to do like one talk, eventually they will be, get used to it and sometimes they even like it and they will be super great speaker and you didn't know because they were just scared to go in front. People think that peop a person that is in front is like a superstar and know everything. It's not true. Like, and nobody know everything. And yeah. Just encourage gents, sometimes it's, it's help a lot. Also, we have GDE, GDE yeah, telling well. Uh, there is a website to find them, and also now in the uh, community board, it's super easy to send them an email. They add the option to communicate with them, so you can ask and find the Google developer expert. And what, what is fun with that is Google sometimes pay for them to come to your events, so it's like a speaker for free. Uh, you, it's important to have like a share community. So trying to uh, cross share events and CFP and things like that between other community and have a partnership with community is super great. Also, uh, if you f you're not finding sp speakers, you can always ask for uh, to your sponsor if there is a speaker that they want to show to your event because it's more visibility for them, and usually they have expert, and they're super willing to send a speaker for your event. And you can always search on Google and be super creepy and talk and find people on LinkedIn and make sure that they they want to apply to your event. Uh, how to evaluate speakers? That is a little bit more complex. So you need to define your rules in the beginning, otherwise it will not be. It will be super hard if you have a super big list of speakers. Um, mostly my criteria is divided three subject. It's like uh, the subject of the, con the content is interesting or not, the experience of the speakers, and the popularity of the speakers. So for the subject, I subdivide it in like four uh, categories. Is the subject that the speaker uh, try to, the, yeah, the subject that they write is clear or not. <coughs> Sometimes it's like super vague, you don't know what they will talk about. It's like technology, it's interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you can evaluate is it clear or not what they want to say. Uh, if the subject, it's original, if it's trending, is it something is super uh, in line with your community or not, and is it relevant subject. And in the other part, there is a subject, <laughs> subjective evaluation. When you see a talk and like, oh my God, yes, I want this talk so badly. This is not, this is more a personal way, but it's a way of like animating some talk because usually speakers are good to write content and like, like you say, oh, the subject is clear, everything is clear. And the only way to like decide which talk you want more is with your subjective part. So yeah, uh, evaluation is important to have even number because if you, have, you don't know where to put a person and you have like five parts like this, you will put in in average. Like, oh, yeah, it's average. The content is good, the speaker is good, average. But if you have only four number, four criteria, you need to choose between is it ordinary or interesting. So at least you will, you will force yourself to really have a decision on it. After that, pitch talk. Depending if you're doing for a startup, it's nice. But usually in Google Developer Group, we don't want that uh, people come and talk about their technology. Oh, their, how much their technology is good. And like, 
what did I learn? Nothing. I wanted to learn something in a talk. And it's important to spot which person are there just to promote the fact that you should use their technology because it's so amazing. Versus I want to explain you how this technology work is different. Uh, the speaker experience, uh, there is a lot of things. Uh, watch, please watch all the videos. Sometimes they are super boring people talking <laughs> in front of people. And sometimes they're super too much technologic and you're like, oh my God, that will be so stressful because it's stressful. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> please, if you have, no, it's a way of animating people. You're like, oh my God, no, 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 this is. And if there is already have experience talking at other events, or is this, is this first time, just evaluating that and keep it on a sheet or a website if you're, you're more interesting. The popularity is important because you want at least one or two, three stars that people are like, oh, I will come to this event because this person is there. And I follow this person by heart. So yeah. And there is also uh, sometime, if you have a company that's popular, the only fact to have a person that works in that company can be something that brings people to come to your event. Uh, so the best place to be is in the middle of the tree. Oh, yeah, see the super session are there, but it will not be all super session. So with evaluating, you can, only, you can create your own spreadsheet or do a website or do something more advanced or buy a technology that will help you manage all uh, the score and your evaluations and compile everything for every speakers. After that, you need to eliminate those because I, in my, sometime for my event, I get like 300 persons that want to talk to my event. I'm like, I'm choosing 20. How can I <laughs> choose like the 20 best speakers in all, and talk in all of those propositions? So you need to uh, eliminate some talk that costs too much because people sometimes, uh, if you pay for travel, they're like, oh, I'm coming from China. And I want to do a talk. You're like, okay, but I don't have the budget to bring you the, from there. So it's sad. But sometimes you need to eliminate people because it costs too much travel to bring them. And also, you can eliminate people uh, by uh, topic. So there is always sometimes two or three or more talk that will talk about the same subject. And you choose the best one or the two best one of this subject and eliminate all the others. You can also. There is a lot of speakers that propose a lot of topics. So if you have a topic that is super interesting with that speaker, choose the best one and eliminate all the other topic. So at least, you know, we will keep that speaker. But if we have this speaker, it's for this topic. And you can continue eliminating, uh, trying to find the best uh, content for your events that match everything. And yeah, it's super hard. And also, I have a trick for my personal trick is I have yes, maybe yes, maybe no, no, and oh, the speaker was already there uh, in other events, so I, I want to have new faces sometimes, so I just indicated that those speakers already speak a lot in our event, and we may let people uh, choose from yeah, the new people. So maybe, yeah, I guess it's really we take that person. And if we have too many yes, we need to go converse to some, some people will be maybe yes in the selections. And um, maybe no, it's like, it's great, but I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's not a yes. It's mostly a no, but it's a uh, okay topic. And no, it's like really, we don't want this talk. So it can help you eliminate it and you go through that unless you have the number of speaker you need. Um, uh, it's important also to have a mix of speakers. So you try to have like um, a third of new speakers. It's important to encourage people to go on stage and talk to others. But you want to have the rest that are super experimented and uh, some superstar in a way or the super session that the content is super great and topic. So people will not feel that your event is bad if there is too much Top talk that is okay or not that good because it's happened. You 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 take a guess. You're like, I don't know if this speaker is good because it's his first talk or thing like that. 
but the topic is super great. So I will put that topic and hope that <laughs> the person will make it and it will be great, but sometimes it's fail. It's, it's normal, it's event. So you want at least to make sure that people will like your event in general and not uh, feel like, oh my God, why did I pay or come from this day? And if you do international, try to encourage people from your city also to participate and not having only international, because it, one, it costs a lot, <laughs> and two, it's difficult to manage all the plane travel and things like that. And yeah, I forgot about the important one. It, in a high ideal world, we want 50, 50 uh, percentage of genders. And now gender, what is gender? I don't know anymore. But <laughs> like, you can ask, and people are willing sometimes to say that which gender are they, if there are no binary or between and things like that. But you want a diversity. And you try to, with your evaluation, to guess which person. If you have two topics that's super good, and one is coming from kind of diversity or gender that is less common, you can choose the one that is less if it's kind of equal, and it will help you bring diversity with that. Uh, for all your maybe yes, it's important to keep them in the list to have a waiting list of speakers, because when you give a response to the speakers, a lot of them uh, change their plan, accept another talk, and they are not available anymore. So you want to have your maybe yes fit or have a plan B when people cancel. And it's happening a lot. <laughs> Even though they say yes, after that they cancel. But it's another subject. Uh, so prepare your event, uh, in the all my stall, if you have time, take more time to prepare all the website, make sure it's in advance before you're doing your call for paper. After that, uh, if you have four months with your call for paper before the event, it's like you time to tell an answer to, the, to all the speakers at least two months in advance so they can organize, take a plan, like buy their ticket if they need to move. Otherwise, it's too short and people have other obligations and they will not planify well. And well, once you say the response to the speakers, it's important to keep communication with them until the event because uh, you need to make sure that they know all their benefits, where is the venue, if they buy your, their ticket, and if uh, they have a valid passport. It's happened to me. I have a speaker that didn't came because she missed her flight because her, her passport was not valid anymore. And those kind of things is, is simple communication, but it's important uh, to make sure that the event goes well. And it's important also to, to use psychology to make sure that speakers have prepared their talk before the event. So <laughs> everybody is last person last minute person and or late. And <laughs> uh, if you tell the speaker that they need to give you your, the slide one week before the event, at least they will watch the day before to try to do mostly of their talk. They will not, most of them are, didn't finish well, but at least they have the content ready and they will just change small thing before the event. <coughs> and you need to send reminder to people because people like reading emails. Do people do that? They forget the email, they, the email get lost, uh, they don't remember the deadline, so you need to remember them, the deadline, a month before, a week, two days, and eventually they will get it. <laughs> but if you, do, you think people are smart and they will do what you tell them, no, they forgot. <laughs> people are people. So yeah. And uh, make sure in your event to have plan A, B, C, D, because everything that go wrong will go wrong. And every event, something doesn't work, and speakers doesn't wake up, it's don't get on the flight, miss something. So try at least to have like prepare uh, a talk that you can go with it if a speaker doesn't wake up and something cannot make it. And also, if you, you can also have a backup speakers to your events. So if something happened the day 
or the week before you have like a plan B <laughs> and otherwise try to find if you have to track if everybody can fit on a track is good you can just cancel one track and put everybody on the other track so it's all those what can go wrong that you need to think before your events and usually with all that you can have super great content and great speakers and your event will go fine. So this was my talk. And now I will uh, lend you to Tim and Dan to talk to you about SWAG. So thank you.